let's talk about SummerSlam. Yo, what's up, guys? It's JLD, and in today's video, we talking about SummerSlam. I gotta say, this has to be one of the most drama-filled and crazy SummerSlams or PLEs since WrestleMania 40. And in today's video, we're gonna go over each of the matches that happened in the order they happen and talk about all the craziness that happened throughout the Cleveland show. I was at the edge of my seat. I also realized that my Samsung can also dual record my rear and front camera, so I started reacting to it on TikTok. The crowd was going crazy. I was excited for all the crazy things going down, so let's talk about it. And if you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications. That way you get some of the best wrestling content out there. Sit back, relax, and enjoy this video. Boom. All right, so SummerSlam started off with Liv Morgan versus Rhea Ripley for the Women's World Championship. And this was the best way you could have started this freaking show. I already called it. Dominic was betraying Rhea. And that's exactly what happened with Liv Morgan making out with Dominic Mysterio after the match. It was just... Bro, even though I already called it, I was still shocked. Dominic has become one of the biggest heels of the WWE, and this just is the icing on the freaking cake. Like, wait till Monday Night Raw when he comes out with Liv Morgan by his side, the amount of boos that are gonna go down, he's not gonna be able to say anything. In terms of the match itself, the match itself was actually pretty good. Rhea Ripley had to, like, put in her shoulder blade back because it, like, was dislocated or dislocated, and then she was gonna use the steel chair, but then Dominic was gonna, like steal it back so that way she actually wins the women's world championship legit but it was all a freaking act also wwe decided to try out the referee cameras as reported not that long ago so you can see the point of view of the referees during the match they only did it for a few of them though they only did it for this match as well as the seth rollins match later on the night the ending had me confused just a little bit but once i saw dominic smiling once Liv morgan won the match i was like that's it. And then once he started picking her up, I was like, oh my God, this is actually happening. And you kind of feel bad for Rhea Ripley too, because she looked defeated. Like she felt like she just lost everything when Dominic grabbed, lived and kissed her. But anyway, great way to start the show. Next up, we got Braun Breaker versus Sami Zayn for the Intercontinental Championship. And I'm not going to lie. I kind of was just looking at my phone during this moment. But at the same time, I expected Braun Breaker to win. And that's exactly what happened. It seemed like almost total domination throughout the whole match. Spear after spear after 23 mile an hour spear. You know, Corey Graves can't stop talking about it. But finally, Braun Breaker is your new Intercontinental Champion. Let's see what happens on Monday Night Raw and who his next opponent is going to be. Next up, we had Logan Paul versus LA Knight for the United States Championship. And I thought LA Knight was going to come out with a whole Slim Jim car, like replace the Prime with the Slim Jim sponsorship. But in this case, he just destroyed the freaking window. Logan Paul came out with Machine Gun Kelly, who is also from Cleveland, which was cool. But also remember, MGK, Kevin Owens power bombed you through a table. You didn't want the same thing to happen again this time. Logan Paul did an amazing moonsault from the top rope, which was absolutely insane. LA Knight did a crazy table bump, but as pretty similar to every other Logan Paul match. You know, his whole prime boys are there and they're ready to give him the brass knuckles, but it ended up working out in LA Knight's favor, giving Logan Paul one final BFT before securing the title win. Also, MGK, what the hell was that trying to put your back towards the camera like we weren't going to see you giving Logan the brass knuckles anyway? But I'm happy for LA Knight. He definitely deserves his first WWE championship in the WWE be you can debate if it's the million dollar championship but i consider this one the first next we got nia Jax versus bailey for the wwe women's championship and as expected during the end of the match it's tiffy time shows up and acts like she's gonna cash in but bailey just like attacked her so it just didn't happen but anyway, that distraction helped out Nia Jax to completely destroy Bailey with not one, but two of her signature, like, sit-downs, whatever freaking finisher her thing is called, I don't know. And now Nia Jax is your WWE Women's Championship alongside Tiffany Stratton. I personally think Tiffany Stratton could hold the Money in the Bank briefcase until maybe the Royal Rumble. Maybe she cashes in at the Royal Rumble, so that way she could go into WrestleMania as champion. But we'll just have to find out and see. Next up, we got Drew McIntyre versus CM Punk with Seth Rollins as the special guest referee, and everything was going as normal up until until somehow Drew McIntyre lost the bracelet and CM Punk was able to grab it. Somehow Seth Rollins got hold of the bracelet and put it around his wrist so that way it doesn't get like lost in the match or whatever. CM Punk sees this. CM Punk gets upset. He's like, Rollins, why are you holding that? That allows Drew McIntyre to do a bunch of Claymore kicks and everything that he has to do. And finally gets the one, two, three on CM Punk after CM Punk's ego makes him get pissed off at Seth Rollins even more. Talking shit between the two. CM Punk gives him a GTS and... That's it, basically. But at the end of the match, Drew McIntyre takes the bracelet back. So obviously there's going to be more to the story than just SummerSlam. I could see the Bad Blood or Bash in Berlin having match number two, maybe the triple threat match between the three of them, or Drew McIntyre versus CM Punk part two. 
Next, we got Gunther versus Damian Priest for the World Heavyweight Championship. And this went exactly as I thought it was going to go down. But let me tell you first, guys, Gunther felt the taste of his own medicine with all the chops that Damian Priest was giving him to the point where Gunther's chest was freaking bleeding, man. And they put on one hell of a match. You know, they were doing South of Heaven, their freaking power bombs up until Finn Balor appears. And you think Finn Balor is there to cheer on Damian Priest? Nope. All of a sudden, Damian Priest gets the South of Heaven on Gunther one more time. And then all of a sudden, Finn Balor grabs Gunther's leg and puts it on the rope and immediately turns away, pissed off at that he just betrayed Damian Priest. And just like that, Damian Priest is no longer your world champion and your ring general is your new world heavyweight champion. Let's bow our heads in silence for the judgment day. And then finally, the main event to close SummerSlam, Cody Rhodes versus Solo Sokoa for the WWE Championship contested under Bloodline rules. And just like any other Bloodline match, this goes as expected. It starts off one-on-one -on -one with Cody and Solo Sokoa. They fight it out, do whatever they got to do. But of course, the Bloodline's Tamatonga and Tonga Loa have to make an appearance. Jumping Cody, doing their finishers and stuff like that. And then we got a surprise entrance from Kevin Owens and Randy Orton helping to even the odds against Tamatonga and Tonga Loa. But it isn't long until Jacob Fatu appears and just destroys Cody Rhodes. Also, Jacob Fatu, I hope you recover from your leg injury. After Jacob Fatu splashes Cody Rhodes through the table, the inevitable happens. Our tribal chief Roman Reigns returns and the whole crowd just goes ballistic, including myself. Literally, this man just walking through the stage, just walking slow, made the crowd go wild. I was just excited. I saw his t-shirt. I bought it right away. But finally, Roman Reigns runs into the ring. Michael Cole was like who's he going for obviously he's going for solo and that's exactly what happened as he does the superman punch and one spear before walking off and giving cody rhodes that little stare of i got you bro knock out solo and that's exactly what happened cody rhodes does the crossroads and ends solo sokoa's reign as tribal chief now they didn't give us any information on when roman reigns is actually returning is he going to show up on this coming smackdown is he going to be at the next pay-per-view war game survivor series we'll have to find out as the days go by but as of now it seems like there's no news on when he's actually returning onto tv but it is nice to see him back they bought back his wrestlemania entrance rather than the original head of the table music that he normally does on smackdown so i wonder if they're gonna keep this permanently or if it's just gonna be for this one time and then they'll bring back the original song once he's back on tv and if you're already this far into the video i want y'all to put your ones up for your original tribal chief Roman Reigns. So in general, SummerSlam was a very exciting and drama-filled show that this was probably one of the better shows of the year going up next to WrestleMania. WrestleMania will still be my top, but SummerSlam probably goes second. I still would have wished Jimmy Uso would have helped as well. Maybe Jay Uso, they reunite just for one time, but it's all good. Things happen for a reason and they're just trying to make it slow a little bit. But yeah, guys, that's the end of the video. I appreciate you guys. I wanted to make this video real quick so you guys could see my review of SummerSlam. If you haven't done so already, make sure you subscribe to the channel and turn on notifications. That way you get some of the best wrestling content out there. I will see you guys on the next video. Peace out, guys.